Hello everyone and welcome back to Clinical Cousins YouTube channel where today we're going to go over the nicotinic and muscarinic receptors which are activated by our parasympathetic nervous system. So first off, with just a quick recap, uh, we have our parasympathetic nervous system here. We know that it uses the cranial nerves and also S2 to S4. And we know that the pre G neurons release acetylcholine which bind to N2 receptors which causes the post G receptors to also release acetylcholine. Now what we're going to differentiate between today are the types of nicotinic and muscarinic receptors. So N1 receptors are actually located at our neuromuscular junction. So these nicotinic 1 receptors, they're still activated by acetylcholine, but they're only found in our skeletal muscle. So drugs like vecuronium and rocuronium will block this N1 receptor to cause a skeletal muscle paralysis. So it will cause our muscles to become flaccid or limp. So this is very helpful to relax the body's muscles before surgeries. Now N2 receptors, on the other hand, they're also activated by acetylcholine, but they're located on the cell bodies of all of the post G neurons, which are located in various ganglia in the autonomic nervous system. So remember, N2 receptors found in both parasympathetic and sympathetic post G neuron cell bodies. So now we're going to take it to muscarinic receptors that are also activated by acetylcholine, but they are found in different cells throughout the body. So they are activated by acetylcholine from our post G neuron, our post G parasympathetic neuron, but these receptors will actually cause a direct action in the cell. So if you haven't seen our video on the adrenergic receptors, go check that video out because the terminology and the process that is used in that video, it'll make a lot more sense uh, and when we're talking about this video. So muscarinic receptors are also G proteins. They also weave in and out of the cell membrane. So if this is a muscarinic receptor, it's kind of stuck or stitched onto our cell membrane. Now the muscarinic receptors are grouped together as M135, M2, and M4. So I group them together based on their mechanism of action. Uh, so if we need to remember anything, it's M135 calcium drive. This is because M1, 3, and 5 receptors have the same mechanism of action as our alpha-1 receptors. So they work by activating phospholipase C, IP3, and protein kinase C to increase intracellular calcium, or in other words, to drive up our calcium content inside of our cells. So remember, M135, calcium drive. Now, interestingly, uh, M2 receptors, or muscarinic 2 receptors, directly activate the cell. So this is why we say M2 directly activate you. This is because M2 receptors, when they are bound to acetylcholine, of course, become activated and will actually directly activate the cell to perform its action. Lastly, we come to M4 block some more. So M4 receptors block adenylylcyclase, which causes a parasympathetic action in the cell. So what have we learned? We've learned that nicotinic and mus muscarinic receptors are all activated by acetylcholine. That is the commonality. Now, where it gets different is that N1 receptors are located in our skeletal muscle. When we block those, they become flaccid. When we activate, they contract. Now, N2 receptors are located in all of the autonomic ganglia, specifically on the post-G cell bodies of our parasympathetic and sympathetic neurons. And then lastly, we know that muscarinic receptors, we know that they're activated by acetylcholine, but they're grouped together by their mechanism of action. So M135 uses the phospholipase C, IP3 protein kinase C pathway. So M135, calcium drive, driving up calcium concentration inside the cell. We know that M2 directly activate you. When the M2 receptor is activated by acetylcholine, it directly causes a parasympathetic action inside the cell. Now, lastly, we come to our M4 receptors. M4 blocks some more. So when M4 receptor here is activated by acetylcholine, it will actually block adenylylcyclase, which will cause a parasympathetic action in the cell. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to learn with us today. And remember to like and subscribe for more content.